What's up guys, Chris Kane here with a deck profile of Chaos Dragons for the September 2012 format here on Super Genji 88's channel. Uh, before I get into what uh, my channel is about, I'm going to get straight into the deck profile. This is the deck that I played against uh, Super Genji in his video. And uh, just explain to you some of the card choices and the combos of the deck. So this is what I run. I won one VLS because it wasn't banned. I won run one trooper. It just helps out a lot, but uh, the point of the deck is not to mill constantly. The deck can get lights and darks in the grave itself without just milling and possibly milling like important cards. Um, one Chaos Sorcerer, because we can only run one, but he, he's really good at one. One Dark Arm, which is super easy to get out in this deck. Uh, three Dark Flares, which is um, a really key part of the deck. A lot of people doubt Dark Flare, but his ability to ditch a dragon to send another dragon to the grave as his cost, and then banishing a card is just too good. You're able to successfully get Red Eyes in the Grave or Pulsar or anything. Uh, so it's really helpful at 3. Plus he's a level 5, which I'll get to why that's important in a second. Uh, 2 Eclipse Wyverns. You only really have 2 targets, but you know it's not a bad thing to run out of targets. 3 Effect Veiler, which I personally like. Uh, people are saying that Effect Veiler isn't really needed anymore, but um, I still play Veiler because it's very important to Synchro in this deck. This deck Synchro's a lot, and Veiler is mainly why, uh, along with Birdman, but this card is used multiple ways, not just to negate effects, and it really does help. And then, of course, we play one Birdman. I play Birdman because Tour Guide is at two. Birdman just helps out a lot, opens up a lot of plays, makes Arcanite plays, be able to uh, sync with Dark Flare to make level eights. And, and, you know, unless you, if you don't use Birdman's effect, there's just an extra Dark in the graveyard, so you Synchro Summon for a level eight, and then you can just drop Dark Armed if all you need were two more darks. So that's really important. Gores is really important. Uh, a new thing with Chaos Dragons is I play one Descendant and three Great Keeper Spy. Now that Insectors have taken a hit in the ban list, although I do not believe that will, they will not see any play at all, but um, what I'm saying is that this card could have potential in being played in Chaos Dragons now, not just because of um, the defense points, which are really good, but also it's a dark. It's able to get another spy. You can exceed for Utopia, which creates a light and dark in the grave already. And uh, also, uh, I used to play Breaker in my Chaos Dragons, but a Descendant is just awesome because this card can destroy anything on the field, any problem you have. Like, say your opponent has Microcosmos on the field, uh, you know, they attack into your Spy uh, with, like, DD Survivor or something like that. They take 200, get out Descendant, and then they start to think about what they need to do. And sometimes they'll, like, dark hole the field or whatever because they know you're going to pop Macro, and they don't have answers like that. They have to end their turn, you could just pop Macrocosmos and just go from there which is pretty good. I like to send it a lot. It definitely gets you out of situations, especially since you run three spies. Um, spy in, in your hand is not really a dead card if you run out of targets because you do mill quite a bit, but not a lot. But, uh, you know, it, it just creates another... It's just an extra dark for your deck to be able to ditch with... Uh, to get Pulsar out of your graveyard. Three Pulsar, which uh, without a target in the grave, although you do run four targets, I like Pulsar, it's just an easy answer to things like Dolka and you know, crash into Sheehan and stuff like that. So dark um, light pulsar is really important. And of course, you run three Lila, which Lila just really helps getting rid of back row, so you can be able to special summon, you know, BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, Dark Arm, all that stuff. And of course, we have the one limited card, Red Eyes Darkest Metal. Um, I like that this deck is able to do things other than focus on Red Eyes Darkest Metal. Guys, if you play Foolish Burial because you believe that the deck only revolves around Red Eyes Darkest Metal, which is kind of true, but I wanted to make Chaos Dragons be able to do other things other than, you know, uh, focus more on getting Red Eyes out and getting the um, loop. You know, I've been able to duel without Red Eyes, Darkness Metal in the grave, or, you know, it's still in my deck. Um, it's just how the way the deck plays. Like, it's able to do, like, crazy Birdman plays, be able to make Arcanite, be able to attack over your opponent with, like, Dark Flare, um, you know, just being able to summon two light pulsars is 5,000 damage right there. You know, the deck does a lot more than just focus on red eyes. So, uh, red eyes is a good card, but limiting to one is obviously what the game needs because Heretics uses this card to make Gustav max. So, uh, it's, I'm glad to see it at one. And then the deck's not dead um, because this deck just plays like regular chaos now, uh, just with red eyes. So, it's pretty important. And then we play three Raikou. Raikou just gets you out of situations. Plus it's a level two and a light. Um, definitely opens up for other synchro plays. Stuff like that. You know, um, I don't like to leave Raikou on the field by itself. 
Uh, so there are a lot of plays like I don't have to remove light and dark because I can just flip Ryko and then sack it for Dark Flare and then use his effect to set up my graveyard and set up for plays with Light Pulsar or dump a Wyvern, be able to remove Wyvern and get Red Eyes back and all that stuff. Then we play, you know, Sangan and two Tour Guide. Uh, Tour Guide puts dark Darks in the grave and gets Sangan and then, you know, there are plays where you can Tour Guide into Tour Guide and then bounce for Birdman and... Um, Pretty much, you know, go for level three, and you have another tour guide. So that's why um, I play Birdman. Also, uh, you can play Knight of Sandland if you want. Knight of Sandland isn't too bad, but um, I, I just prefer to have six flip effect monsters. And uh, you know, Knight of Sandland is okay, but Raiko can get rid of anything, and also Great Gear Spy summons Descendant, so he can get rid of anything. And Knight of Sandland only destroys a monster. Sometimes your worst enemy is your spell cards, your opponent's uh, spell or trap cards. For the spells, you have Allure of Darkness, Book of Moon. Uh, Book of Moon combos very well with Spy and Raikou, and also Book of Moon is really good against heroes and Down and Rabbit. Be able to Book of Moon your opponent's alias when you have nothing else on the field and they're forced to use it, or you just get an easy negation out of Lagia, or flip Dulka down, which is important. Charge of Light Brigade, um, staple in Chaos Dragons is just too good not to play. Dark Hole, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, 1 MST, which is... Uh, I personally believe you should at least play one MST because, of course, you know, Macro does hurt the deck. Skill Drink can ruin your plays, and so on. And, of course, Solar Recharge. I do not play three because three is a little cloggy. There are times where I draw into Solar Recharge with uh, a Solar Recharge into another Solar Recharge and no more Light Swarms, and then, you know, I mill the other Light Swarms and all that stuff. So two works really well. Um, if you want to play three, that's fine, but the way the deck runs is you're able to just get easy darks and lights in the grave, whether it's flipping Raiko or a spy, getting out another spy, and then exceeding for a light utopia and stuff like that. So the deck can, um, you know, with, with li quite a little bit of thinking, you're able to get lights and darks in the grave without resorting to milling, so that's important. Um, for the extra deck, I made a few changes since the last duel because uh, I didn't really update the deck, but uh, update the extra deck, but it works pretty well. Uh, one Arcanite, which makes a lot of great plays with, uh, Grade Keeper, Spy, and uh, Birdman. Also, Chaos Sorcerer and Effect Veiler just really helps. 2400. Be able to pop two cards in one turn is awesome. Armor Your Arm, because since you play BLS and you're able to, like, I don't know, like, sync um, Sangan with Effect Veiler and then summon BLS and go Armor Your Arm is pretty good. Uh, Black Rose Dragon, because why not? Gaia Knight, um, this is only really, I thought about taking this out, but sometimes there are times where. Um, you know, you might want to sync with like Sangan or whatever just to get his search. Obviously, if you don't bring, if you bring it out with Tor Guy, you can't really uh, sync with it. But you know, there are times where that could be a uh, an option. So that's why I play it. Um, Locomotion R Gen X, which is a fun card to play in your extra deck. You don't have to play it if you want, but you know, it combos really well with uh, Birdman and Chaos Sorcerer in case they affect Baylor Chaos Sorcerer. Also, if you have like a Tor Guy and Sangan out there. Um, or whatever, you know, you're able to just make this. Uh, so it really does help. It's mainly just for Chaos Sorcerer. And then you play uh, Mistworm because you are able to make this with maybe like two great Spies on the field and Effect Veiler to, uh, plus it doesn't target, so it really helps against like ninjas when they use Safe Zone and White Dragon Ninja. It really helps. Scrap Dragon because players play this because you can pop like Pulsar and get his effects, summon Red Eyes, yada, yada, yada. Stardust, which is important to play. Seeds, you play. Levier, My Stroke, Leviathan, Utopia, Utopia Ray, uh, Tyrus, because you play three Dark Flare, and uh, you do side Dragodia, so you can make this. It's a very good card. And then, of course, Wind Up Zen Mains. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the deck profile. Um, definitely check out my channel. Uh, check out my content. I like to do a lot of fun videos, a lot of, make really fun decks, but also I like to help out players who maybe want to get into uh, playing a certain deck and don't really know what to uh, do or just need help with their deck. Maybe some cool tech choices and all that stuff. I just My channel is really just to entertain my subscribers and to help them out with any, um, any help with their deck or any deck they think about running, and I'll definitely help them out. And uh, the, like I said, my channel is just really focused on entertainment and... Uh, that's pretty much all YouTube should be. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Thank you, SuperGenji88, for having this on his channel. And hope to, hope to see you on my channel. Have a good one.